he will eventually come around, I promise. Um, I am not an academic and I don't have a background, scientific background, but I will try to explain you, for you to understand why somebody will be involved in this industry, whether it's for feed or for food. Fifteen years, for fifteen years I had a dream. I wanted to be a vet and I wanted to save all the animals in the world. Not being able to pursue this dream left me trying every other industry there is, in which in every one I had to learn something new. While I was in the hotel business, I learned about food waste. You have four restaurants, one room service, and in one day you have no clue the amount of waste goes to the, the, the food that goes to the trash. In another job I had, I was a scuba diver. And I got to see with my own eyes what we women, we women, no, we humans are doing to the sea and the depletion and it was not good. In another job, in a ranch, I got to learn about how everything that we throw in the land finds its way to our drinking water. So that was it. Not only we need to save the animals, we need to save the environment too. I was lucky to live in Switzerland and being able to create a project to save the animals and the, na and the nature. And if you think that tasting a bug is difficult, try and go and raise funds. So, little after that, I found myself divorced and looking for a job. But it had to be a green job. It has to be sustainable. I am a mother, I need to set the example. So here it comes, my best friend, and says, I have something for you. Look, it's very sustainable, eating insects. I was not sure if he was telling me this because I am from Venezuela, and you know Latino people eat this kind of thing. But still, I was very curious, so we went and diligently Googled all the information we learned, and I will share with you some, and so you can make your mind, and maybe I will manage to change a little bit the perception that you might have. I'm not convincing you to eat it, just to change a little bit the perception. They are sustainable, they are sustainable because they need much, much less, less water than any other farm animal. So much so that some of them will absorb the water from the food they eat. Others, it will absorb it from the humidi hum humidity of the environment. So I think California could use some insects in this moment. Another thing we found out is that they can be fed with the food that we don't use. This means that we don't, not, we don't have to go to the sea to take more fish to keep feeding livestock. Another important thing we discover is that they can be rare vertically, so we don't need to cut more trees. And of course, they produce much less greenhouse gas and almost no waste. So not only less waste, but they are capable of recycle, recycling the waste that we produce. And I'm going very quickly to show you a couple of them. Here you have the maggots. I'm not going to use big words. Those are maggots, and they come from the fly that we all hate. These are the mealworm. They come from one cute beetle, 
And these grubs come from this black soldier fly that we all think it's a wasp, and she will never come inside our houses. So there are companies that use this larva to recycle all the waste that we produce, whether it is in industrial farming or households or in, in the restoration industry. Then if this larva, before they become a fly, can be processed, they will become an amazing additive or supplement for fish meal also to feed animal farm and pet dogs. This is very important to understand because I didn't know animal feed competes with animal food, human food. Uh, and in very big percentage of what of the crops that are in the land are intended to feed the, the animals we eat. On top of that, we have 660, 600 million pets between dogs and cats. That is a lot of animals to feed. No wonder why are people trying to learn something from other cultures, food from other cultures. And here I am going to add some wings and some legs. I'm sorry. You all know them, cricket, grasshopper, and locust. There are companies that understand how we cannot imagine ourselves eating this. This is why they convert it in powder. So in this, so like this, we can profit from things like cricket having more calcium than milk and more iron than meat. And we can fortify our food by introducing this in our smoothies, in the pasta, or in energy bars, or cookies. You are already eating them. This is the food defect, what FDA calls food defects, but that's another talk. So we have edible insects are contributing to food security, to protein shortage, water preservation. They're dealing with pretty much every challenge there is in the planet. I'm sticking with the insects. I hope you do. <laughs> so this is what I do. I, wherever I go, I try to make people more aware and to understand and to have the tools to make the decision. So uh, we team up with startups so we can offer you the opportunity to see them, to touch them, to smell them, to take a lot of selfies. And if you are courageous enough, you will put one in your mouth and you will see it's not that bad. There are people that they do it because they want to save the environment, and they do because it's, very, it's a sustainable alternative. There are people that will do eat insects because it is a healthier alternative. And there are people that don't give a crap about the environment. They will do it for the money, and the environment will still win. I do it because it gives me back something I lost 30 years ago. And I know that edible insects is not the sexiest industry out there, but I get to feel proud of what I do at the end of the day. You might never eat a bug, but this is a protein worth spreading. Thank you very much.